So let's talk about this Millie Bobby Brown situation. TikToker Hunter Echo went online and revealed several details about their alleged relationship. So the situation comes from him going live. Hunter Echo goes on to say some really gross shit. Fans were immediately outraged by his claims. Admitting to everything. Groomer, I know, I groomed it. I just feel like we keep seeing a pattern here. Imagine being a grown adult and dating a, a kid. Everything that I did was completely legal. He has no remorse for his actions. I said what I said. I mean, that just sounds so stupid. I'm a human being. You don't say these things to people. It's actually illegal. Trash. And I will never apologize. Okay, let's talk about the vile, disgusting behavior of irrelevant TikTok star Hunter Echo. Since the dawn of time, people have been publicly discussing their relationships online whether you asked for it or not. And sometimes they word vomit all the gory private details all over your screens, leaving room for only one natural reaction. <laughs> Yeah. Now listen, don't get me wrong, I know most of us have shared a story of our forbidden fruit to a friend, it's probably part of the human experience. But when it comes to cruel, abusive, manipulative locker room talk shaming that plays the pathetic boys will be boys theme song that results in an actual adult confessing to grooming a literal child while simultaneously blaming the child and calling himself the victim, I draw the line, you're just an asshole. Because, say it with me friends, it's not drama, it's dangerous. Now sure, I could approach this like all the rest of my docs where we analyze the deeper roots of what might cause this behavior, but I have a short fuse with confirmed troglodytes, so instead, let's just be petty. Let's dive face first and goat scream ah! into the age old question that yeah, Hunter Echo is dangerous, but why? You probably shouldn't be boasting about statutory rape on live Instagram, I mean, think about it. Like, think about it. I don't give a flying f what you f think. And I will never apologize. I have zero things to apologize for. I am sorry for it. Oh, hi there. Hello, hello, hi. It's my face again. Swoop, 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 swoop. Ah. Listen, y'all told me to keep the theme song from the last doc, so I guess here we are. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> This was a tough one. I, I struggled a bit as there are several aspects of what happened with Millie Bobby Brown and Hunter Echo that I wanted to discuss, but as I was looking into this, everything I researched just pissed me the f off. Like, I just, I just wanted to virtually punch everyone in the balls. <laughs> So we're off to a great start. Now, as always, I'm going to break this down into three parts. The destructive fallacy of locker room talk, the media obsession with hypersexualization of young people, and the cringe-inducing trash called Hunter's Apology. Now, also, speaking of internet mess, if you haven't seen them, I have a two-part series on Gabby Hanna that I think you'll find very interesting, as well as one on creep show art. I'll link all of those below. I highly recommend watching them. Oh, look at this sleepy face. Everyone say hi to Pork Chop. We so sleepy. As you guys know, Pork Chop is one of Bill Farrell's kittens I've been fostering from the billing department litter. We have had two official adoptions and we have two more that are in the works. The babies are getting wonderful forever homes. If you are interested in adopting a baby Bill, please DM me on their Instagram account at Bill Farrell for more info. Are you guys following me on Instagram? Cause honey, we should be friends. Are you following me? You sleeping, that's what you doing. <laughs> I'm gonna post this photo on IG, leave a comment on it with the graduation cap emoji because we're all about to enroll in a summer class at Petty University today. And yes, people, merch is coming. More on that very soon. All right, honey, you wanna go back to sleep? Okay, we have a lot to cover. It is intense, but real quick before we dive in, I am so excited for today's sponsor, Deck of Scarlet, and I'm going to show you guys how I created this look right here. Now, I gotta say, y'all have been like really gassing me up lately about like my makeup, and honey, I just, like y'all know how to make a girl feel good, okay? Which is why you're gonna love Deck of Scarlet and I'm gonna show you how I created this look. Deck of Scarlet is a high quality, high performance, clean makeup brand that absolutely destroys how boring clean beauty usually is. Deck of Scarlet changes the game. Like did y'all know that 60% of chemicals from cosmetics end up in our bloodstream? 60% bitch, like what? That's disgusting. Deck of Scarlet is 100% vegan, cruelty free, and they literally have a list of over 1,500 ingredients 
pigments that they do not use. It's clean. But the real tea is the pigmentation and application. It is flawless. So I started with a smoky base for my eyes and then used the gorgeous metal leaf shadow pot on my lids. One swipe gives you stunning coverage. Like you can see me from outer space. Call me intergalactic, bitch, yes. I use shade Night Fever on the outer corner and Disco Ball on the inner. Then I wanted to create a double winged look with the dual drama liquid eyeliner that has gorgeous duochrome shades on one end and black on the other. So I first lined with the shade Interstellar and then with the shade Dark Matter on the other end, I lined underneath to finish the wing. For my face, I used the Mistake Proof Bronzer in the shade Carnal. This stuff is like genius. It comes as a spray and you can spray it directly on your hand, sponge, or brush. I'm using the dual ended double take face brush. And because it's a spray, it gives you this absolutely flawless airbrushed look. I have never in my life liked liquid bronzers. I could never get them to blend, but I am obsessed with this. Then on my cheeks, I use the Mistake Proof Blush in the shade Shameless. And to finish the look, I line my lips and use the three-way solid lip oil in the shade Merlot Moves. It's just chef's kiss. So to check out the products I used and see all of the other ones, click on the link below and use my code SWOOP to get 20% off your first order at deckofscarlet.com. The products are amazing. You will love them. And like tag me on Instagram with your looks if you use the products. I'll share some of you guys. And I'm very happy to say again that I'll be donating some of the proceeds from this sponsorship to Rain. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support these docs and checking out the sponsors. It just helps so much and it's literally what enables me to be able to make these donations and continue making these docs. And I just, I appreciate you guys more than I could possibly ever say. Thank you so much. Okay, back to the show. So as many of you know, Millie Bobby Brown is a 17 year old successful Hollywood actress, model and producer, gaining her notoriety playing the role of Eleven on the monstrously successful show Stranger Things on Netflix where she earned like her first Emmy when she was only like 13. She is the youngest person ever to feature on the Times 100 list and she's gone on to do really big film. Like basically the girl's done more in four years than most people do in their whole lives. I just, bitch I am, I'm over here taking notes, okay? <laughs> On the other side of this is 21 year old Hunter Echo. Hunter, 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 listen, Hunter. A former TikToker who specialized in totally original, unique, never before seen content such as staring at his phone, staring off to the side of his phone, and shittily lip syncing to other people's work while staring at his phone. I know, amazing. <laughs> And listen, look, I did promise myself I was going to try and stay as neutral as possible today. But bitch, I lied, okay? Because I just, I just... Now, Hunter and Millie met when she was just 15 years old, and several photos of Hunter and Millie had recently surfaced of them cheek to cheek, exchanging kisses, and so on, sparking rumors that the two had been dating when she was only 16 years old and Hunter was 20 or 21. So we have Hunter, a grown adult man, dating and being in a appropriately affectionate with Millie, an underaged minor. Now, obviously people took issue with this and instantly a lot of people feared that Millie, a child, was being groomed and also abused by Hunter, the adult. Now, real quick, just so we're all on the same page here, let's grab a definition of grooming. Grooming is befriending and establishing an emotional connection with a child and sometimes the family to lower the child's inhibitions with the objective of SA. Now, I, I should point out a couple of things was there was some debate here. So the age of consent in California where Hunter is and where this allegedly took place is 18. But Millie also owns a home in Atlanta, Georgia where the age of consent is 16. But legality aside, we all know that a 16 year old is not mentally or emotionally fully developed in the brain and is therefore for all intents and purposes still a child and the age of consent laws in my opinion don't effectively reflect that in every state like Georgia for the sake of protecting a child who is not mentally or emotionally ready for a relationship with an adult and shit like don't take it from me take it from her own words this are you awesome. mentally prepared for love it You're in like, real life in real absolutely life, no. not no absolutely and not so when all of this was coming out Hunter in his infinite TikTok wisdom decides to go on Instagram live for like hours you guys don't know anything 
You guys are just following after one person. And proceeds to not only attack and bully Millie, but also goes into graphic detail about intimate things he claims he did with her and, wait for it, admits to actually grooming her. Imagine being a grown adult and dating a, a kid. Groomer, I know I groomed it. Groomer, I know I groomed it. Bitch! Keep digging your grave, dumbass. I wish I was making this up. I'd say stranger things have happened, but bitch. Keep digging your grave, dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> I already know for my own sanity, I'm going to need to take us to Petty University to get through some of this, otherwise I will just succumb to the violence. <laughs> so let's go, Petty University. Professor Petty has entered the chat. <laughs> Grab your tea and notebook, class in session. <laughs> Now, we're obviously gonna go through some of this video, but uh, throughout the thing, Hunter seems to like to mock and belittle the accomplishments that Millie has made as a talented actor. He talked about how weird the bitch was. And I started bleeding and I was like, oh she was like, God. she was like, would you hang out? And I was like, I was like, no way. <laughs> That's what happened. So I figured it's only fair that we go down the list of accolades that Hunter has achieved. So <clears throat> just, um, just a second here. I just, I think that they were somewhere. Oh shit, I forgot. He has none. He's a lip synker on TikTok. Bitch. Okay, I digress. Let's continue. <laughs> Now, I'm not gonna focus much on the vile, disgusting, graphic things that confessed groomer Hunter claimed he did with an actual child. But yeah, as y'all know, with the swoop doc, I like to dive into other areas not discussed as much, uh, starting with the long list of excuses. She was obsessed, in love. It wasn't him. He talked about how weird the bitch was. I... <laughs> I was living in Millie's house for eight months. Her mom and dad knew about everything. <laughs> And then I got, I got tricked. I got tricked. I got taken advantage of anything. She used her powers on me. Blaming the victim, who is a child, is the number one manipulation tactics adults and abusers use to deflect their guilt and try to victimize themselves. Everything. What could you possibly have in common with a 16 year old? Everything. Everything? That doesn't make any sense. And the thing is, if you really thought this child was obsessed with you, number one, we all know your emotions are often much stronger as a teenager, you attach yourself to things. That is the very nature and clue that, yo, you're dealing with a child here. Back the f off. You know, you're at two different stages at life when you're 16 and when you're a grown ass adult. But here's my favorite part of the classic abuse tactic. And then I got, I got tricked. I got tricked. I got taken advantage of anything. She used her powers on me. There it is. This trifling bitch really just said that the child used her powers and manipulated him. He is the real victim here. She used her powers on me and I got manipulated. Like we are looking at a living, breathing example of Darvo people, which is a common manipulation strategy for psychological abusers. Thank you to the viewer who taught me about that. So let's look at it. Darvo, D-A-R-V-O, refers to a reaction perpetrators of wrongdoing, particularly SOers, may display in response to being held accountable for their behavior. Darvo stands for deny, attack, and reverse victim and and offender. The perpetrator or offender may deny the behavior, attack the individual doing the confronting, and reverse the roles of victim and offender, such as the perpetrator assumes the victim role and turns the true victim into an alleged offender. What did we see? We saw him deny. I didn't do anything. I have nothing to apologize for. And I will never apologize. I hope you know that. I have nothing to apologize for. And then he also shifts that blame, that responsibility, onto Millie and her parents. I was living in Millie's house for eight months. How the f is there a lawsuit? Her, from, her mom and dad knew about everything. Everyone involved knew what was going on, as if that somehow would excuse grooming behavior. And then he attacks. Millie deserves better. Yeah. Millie's a piece of shot. By sharing very explicit things that allegedly happened between the two of them without her consent. Something like that. 
and then very classically reversing the victim and the offender by saying, oh, well, no, she manipulated me. And I got manipulated. So he goes from weaponizing sexuality without consent and discussing details of their relationship that number one might not even be true, but that doesn't even matter because the fact that he is saying these things as if they are fact and blaming the child for being groomed. Yeah, I beat the shit out of my girlfriend, but she didn't have to stick around in the relationship. She could have just walked out the door. This is how people, this is how adults exude their power imbalance over children or over victims and over survivors. You wore a short skirt. It's your fault. You were in a bikini. It's your fault. You exist. It's your fault. I hope more than anything that you guys understand if people use those type of excuses, if they weaponize that against you for something that you are surviving, f them. It's not your fault. Woo! I didn't mean to go all the way into that. I am totally like off my notes here, but bitch, I think someone needed to hear that. So here we are. <laughs> class in session, class dismissed. I don't, bitch, I don't even know where we are anymore, okay? Petty University just for this whole episode, okay? Let's continue. Next. We need, to, we need to hear from Millie. Millie will never address it because she's a coward. Because she's a coward. Did this washed up TikToker really just call a child a coward? Because she's a coward. Because she's a coward. Because she's a coward. That's my only thing about that. Millie will never address it. Millie will never address it. I don't know what in the gluten-free, Harry Styles, cinnamon toast audacity you have to believe, but I know this dusty ass former adult TikToker did not just call a literal child with an Emmy and the biggest show to hit Netflix a coward for not speaking up after you literally confessed to grooming. Calvin, Cal, do you hear what I'm saying, Calvin? This musty TV is for the streets, y'all. We gonna take a vacation a trip to Iceland, but you know, today we ain't going to Reykjavik. We go into Reykjavik, okay? Because I just, Persephone, are you, are you listening? <laughs> I don't know why I keep talking to these people. They don't exist. It is literally just me sitting here. Maybe I shouldn't admit that. See, the thing is, confess groomer hunter. Groomer, I know, I groomed it. You exploited a teenage child, threw a fit when you didn't get famous for it, and then you crawl so deeply up your own ego that you felt the need, the right, and the unmitigated gall to sexually exploit, demean, shame, abuse, and manipulate an actual child because you're not famous. And I will never apologize. But yeah, sure. The child is a coward. Like who leaked the photos, Hunter? Hey, who posted the pics? Hunter posted the pics. No. I'm sorry. Hey, who posted the pics? Hunter posted the pics. You're gonna have to- Hunter posted the pics. You're gonna have to speak up. Hunter posted the pics. Yes, oh shit, it was you. It was you. Okay, cool. Now, I should point out, Millie's PR team has issued a statement claiming what Hunter said in the IG live video was false. Mr. Ekimovic's remarks on social media are not only dishonest, but also are irresponsible, offensive, and hateful. Instead of engaging in a public discourse with him through the press, or on social media, we are taking action to ensure that he stops this behavior once and for all. Hunter posted this live stream and Hunter abused a child as an attempt to shame and discredit her as a person, perhaps as a form of verbal revenge porn. We'll, we'll call it P word. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, here's a quick definition, as I think it's really important to know these types of abuse in case you have experienced it yourself. Revealing or sexually explicit images or video of a person posted on the internet, typically by a former sexual partner, without the consent of the subject and in order to cause them distress or embarrassment. I fully believe that revealing explicit stories verbally without consent of the other person, the locker room talk as some like to cheaply diminish it to, is equally or nearly equally a violation of trust and can be just as distressing or embarrassing, especially when the victim is underage. Does it mean that someone wants revenge on another person and post P word material containing them? Not quite. In fact, in many jurisdictions, a perpetrator doesn't even need to be exacting revenge on anyone. The distributor of the material need only to distribute the sexually explicit video or P word with the intent to annoy or harass the victim without their consent. Revenge P word is a form of cyber sexual harassment or in
in some cases, cyberbullying, and should be taken very seriously, particularly if minors, those under the age of 18 years old, are the subject of the revenge keyword. People who resort to revenge keyword in any medium are the real cowards. So again, bravo, Hunter. You really nailed that one. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention that Hunter, who swore up and down that he'd never make an apology because he has nothing to apologize for, made a damn apology video. Bitch, this, <laughs> this shit just writes itself. Now, let me be real, I already know that I, Professor Petty, cannot possibly make it through this apology without giving way to my internal desire of punching people in balls. <laughs> I have no other choice but to bring you the Wheel of Deflection. Wheel of Deflection. Yes, the part of the show where we watch yet another influencer apology and rate how much accountability they actually take versus how far they bend their backs to deflect from what really happened. <laughs> okay, Hunter, show us what you got. I wanted to address the live stream incident that happened. Oh. Oh, I'm listening. Um, it should have never happened in the first place. That was a stupid idea on my part. To think it was gonna be okay to just continue to go live as it was getting more and more negative in the comments. Um, I probably live streamed for about two to three hours and in those two to three hours, I was getting more and more drunk. Oh, is that why? After I kept seeing how negative the comments were, or hearing or seeing whatever people were saying to me, good friend deflection it was getting me more and more irritated like i said and i just in the alcohol <laughs> my natural instinct when i see people doing that kind of stuff or when i see what people were saying is like i'm like okay so that's my point oh I looked horrible on my family I looked horrible on me I looked horrible on my friends I said what I said, I said what I said, I can't take that back, I can't take that back, I can't take that back, I was getting more and more drunk. Uh. I, I'm, I'm, what, what happened? I'm awake. I said what I said, that's it. You seem to have forgotten to apologize to the actual victim. I'm just saying, I'm just saying you might, you might want to revise. That's it. N no? Okay. Here, you know what? Instead of playing more, I've got an idea. Let's fix Hunter's apology for him. It sounded very immature. It looked horrible on my family. It looked horrible on me. It looked horrible on my friends. <clears throat> Let me get this right. I acted like an absolute trash person who took advantage of a child for the sake of chasing clout, and when that didn't work, I verbally harassed, shamed, and victim blamed her because I knew society caters to a level of misogyny that I can manipulate to my advantage. I am sorry for doing that live stream. I should have ended it the moment it started getting bad, but I chose not to. <clears throat> I'm sorry for grooming a child and then degrading her by sharing highly explicit things I allegedly did with her after leaking photos of us together. I said what I said, and I can't take that back. I just want you to know I'm not okay with what I said. <clears throat> Let me get this right. I said what I said, and the only reason I'm apologizing now is because I was probably hit with a legal cease and desist. I'm not trying to justify it at all. That's it. I am trying to justify it, which is why I blamed being drunk and blamed the people in the comments for why I said those things. And I'm not okay with the fact that I got caught and my clout train has self-destructed. Is that better for you, Hunter? Did I fix it for you? That's it. Okay, great. Glad we cleared that up. Class dismissed. <laughs> there is a long-standing history of hypersexualizing not just Millie, but nearly every single girl and woman in this industry. And it's a problem that's rooted not just in misogyny, but in the normalization of treating girls like their only real value in life is to be desirable and to make babies. It's how we wind up with the cover of W Magazine teasing why TV is sexier than ever, giving a list of actors, including one Millie 
Billy Bobby Brown, who was 13 at the time. Now, I found a quote from an article in USA Today titled, How We Failed Millie Bobby Brown, and in it is a quote from Laura Palumbo, who is the communications director at the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, and she says, when someone is experiencing that kind of far-reaching sexualization by society, by the media, it takes away some of their power and agency in S relationships. They can't control the way they've been sexualized, and that may impact the way others treat them. Yes, there was outrage about what Hunter did, but the thing is, there's some hypocrisy here we may not want to admit. So the same public who are outraged are often the same public that consumes show after show and movie after movie that romances young, often underage girls and cheers on portrayals of them dating much older guys. From the pairing of Anna Annabelle Wallace with Tom Cruise in the reboot of The Mummy, an age gap of 22 years, to Kira Knightley paired with Steve Carell in Seeking a Friend for the End of the World, a gap of 23 years, Hollywood doesn't want to let women age and doesn't want to let men feel like they've aged. Woo! Honey, oh it hurts, it hurts. Angelina Jolie was cast as Colin Farrell's mother in Alexander. Jolie is only a year older than Farrell. She's a year older than him in real life and she played his mother, bitch. Oh, oh, oh f me. Okay, awesome. So y'all remember the show Pretty Little Liars? Pretty Little Liars was a show that ran until 2017 about young high school kids and one of the main side stories was Aria who has a long-standing intimate dating relationship with her high school teacher bitch and at the end she marries him. I'm sorry but if we want to talk about a template for grooming the show played up the fantasy not just by like glorifying their relationship but with many, many physically intimate scenes. And when she grew up, they got married. Yay, all is right in the world. Hashtag couples goals. I just, so there's some hypocrisy here, right? We see the shows, we watch the shows, we love the shows. But like, where was the outrage? Christopher? The, Karen? Did you, you see the out, no? Tell me about your first on-screen kiss. There we go. What um, was that first on-screen kiss like? Media, media, listen. Like, can we like not keep pressing child actors to retell what it was like to kiss? So uh, now things are, we're gonna play some sexy music right now. Yeah. And then make remarks that would generally be considered inappropriate. Uh, you were that fast Canadian boy fact, we read yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All hands and lips. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, look at them, they're young. You should take that as a badge of honor. They're yeah, like, he's true. got the moves. Look at him. I'm gonna wait three more years and make my move <laughs> on that kid. <sighs> and you know, listen, like I know, especially in these interviews, the adults are going to be given specific questions to ask uh, from the studio. And the first kiss was a big selling point for the show. But like, think about that for a second. The kiss between two kids was a big selling point for people to tune in to the show. And the thing is, like Finn, the kid being interviewed, like, apparently is just supposed to laugh it off. For sure. All hands and lips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because kids are so objectified that they're conditioned from an early age that that is normal and to just laugh it off. You're like, yeah, look at them, they're young. I'm gonna wait three more years and make my move on that kid. <laughs> Sorry, I needed a kitten to find my zen. So, you know, Millie actually shared a similar sentiment recently. Around her birthday in February 2020 when she turned 16, she posted a video montage on her Instagram of media and people criticizing her with headlines like Millie Bobby Brown, criticized for adult style. And my personal favorite, when did Millie Bobby Brown go through the change, menopause? <sighs> In response, Millie wrote a very eloquent statement that I think sums up how dangerous this type of treatment of young girls in Hollywood really is. 16 has felt like a long time coming. I feel like change needs to happen for not only this generation, but the next. Our world needs kindness and support in order for us children to grow and succeed. Shocking, an actual 16 year old referring to herself as a child in case there was any confusion, Hunter, but I digress. The last 
last few years haven't been easy, I'll admit that. There are moments I get frustrated from the inaccuracy, inappropriate comments, sexualization, and unnecessary insults that ultimately have resulted in pain and insecurity for me. But not ever will I be defeated. I'll continue doing what I love and spreading the message in order to make change. Let's focus on what needs changing, and I hope this video informs you on the things that go on behind the scenes of the headlines and flashing lights. Don't worry, I'll always find a way to smile. First of all, yes, queen, okay, we love it. Uh, bravo, Millie, very well said. But you wanna know how the media often responds when a young girl or woman speaks up about not being okay with being hypersexualized? Check out this ridiculous headline. Stranger Things, Millie Bobby Brown rages against being sexualized and insulted. Rages? What in the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup versus Twix universe are you living in that this poised young girl who wrote a poignant insight into what life is like as a young star is rage. First of all, in, in case you missed it, let's define the word rage as violent, uncontrollable anger. Really? And you know, this isn't new. Like, media loves to objectify and then villainize girls and women who speak out about how they're treated and loves to diminish the very valid feelings of being mistreated by writing it off as bitching or complaining or catty. Pun not intended. Are you trying to get me to keep you? Do you guys think I should keep pork chop? This is our relationship all day long. This is, he's just like, let me chill out in your hand, bitch. <laughs> You're so cute. So I came across this article, Why Young Stars Like Billie Eilish, Olivia Rodrigo, and Millie Bobby Brown Date Much, Much Older Men, that discuss some interesting ideas around this, some of which I could relate to personally as I grew up in the entertainment industry, specifically the music industry, like the living, breathing cesspool of all things problematic towards young girls. And I myself dated much older men than me in the industry. The phenomenon is nothing new in Hollywood. Celine Dion was 26 years younger than her husband, who she met when she was 13. Leonardo DiCaprio reportedly only dates women under the age of 25. Literally, people, Leonardo DiCaprio keeps getting older, yet somehow his girlfriends stay the same age. Like, age gaps can create a power imbalance in relationships. Dating older men isn't inherently bad, assuming it's legal, but the intersection of age gaps and gender inequality may leave these young women vulnerable. Oh, are we awake now? Or are we going back to sleep? Okay, honey. Let's continue. Older men often have different experiences and expectations when it comes to relationships and the power imbalance may pressure their younger partners into potentially damaging situations. And I can personally attest to this. We justify these relationships with statements like girls are mature for their age and girls grow up quicker than boys. And while these comments may be true, should they be? Boys are given the right to act childish well into adulthood while women are sexual and treated like adults from the moment they hit puberty. By normalizing these large age gaps, we risk teaching young girls that it is acceptable for older men to sexualize and pursue them. So so what do y'all think? Like, are, are large age gaps healthy? Are they problematic? Is there a certain age gap that's too big? Like, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I came across this fascinating article on UNICEF titled, Not an Object, The Objectification and Sexualization of Girls in the media are linked to violence against women and girls worldwide. Brace yourself. Every 10 minutes, somewhere in the world, an adolescent girl dies as a result of violence. Nearly one in five girls is S abused at least once in her life. Now it goes on to ask the question, why are women and girls so often the victims of violence? Unfortunately, there is no single answer to that question. However, when women and girls are repeatedly objectified and their bodies hypersexualized, the media contributes to harmful gender stereotypes that often trivialize violence against girls. And it goes on to say, hypersexualized models of femininity in the media affect the mental, emotional, and physical health of girls and women on a global scale, including anxiety about appearance, feelings of shame, eating disorders, lower self-esteem, and depression. Fun. <laughs> so many of us look at ourselves in the mirror and think like, oh, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not hot enough. And that is a direct result of how media has hyper 
sexualize people to the point that if you don't look like the latest youngest star, you're not good enough. <laughs> all of that. If you think for one moment that you're not absolutely incredible exactly the way you are, then bitch, come over here, okay? Let me slap some damn sense into you, okay? We go into the bank together and we coming out with some sense. Like beauty standards change every five business days and alternate weekends in order to make you feel worthless. And the fact is those people creating those nonsense beauty standards are humans just like you and their opinion of you and where you fit it doesn't matter because they don't even know where they fit. Bitch, like, enjoy yourself, okay? You've earned it. Okay, all, all jokes aside real quick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little personal. So I've shared briefly before that I was groomed as a child by two men, one of whom was about twice my age, and as a result of that abuse, it snowballed into other areas of abuse, including SA. The abuser often wants you to feel like it's normal, like everyone's cool with it, like Hunter said, and for me and many people who have survived grooming, I did not fully understand what was happening at the time. I thought that I was supposed to do and say what these adults told me to because they're the adults and this is all I was worth. That was all that I had to offer. It took me a long time to come to grips with what had happened and to understand just how vile and abusive those situations were and it wasn't something I could comprehend until I was out of it to see just how manipulated, targeted, and abused I was and it's had a profound effect on my mental health my entire life. So if you have been the victim of grooming or any abuse, or you think you might be in that situation now, please, I need you to know, first of all, this is not your fault. I know I say that nearly like every doc now, but it's true. You do not have to endure this. Please, if you are a minor and are confused about a relationship you have with an adult, if something feels off, if you're being asked to do things that feel uncomfortable or strange to you or told this makes you cool and sexy, please reach out to someone you trust and tell them what's going on. There is no shame in what what you're going through because all the shame is on the adult and not you. Even if they claim that you pursued them, like Hunter tried, they don't have power over you and there are safe adults who want to help you. There are also anonymous hotlines that you can call or text. You don't have to give out your information and they can talk with you to help answer questions you may be confused about and help you find a solution for safety and protection moving forward forward. And if you are an adult now and went through this as a child, first of all, I'm so sorry. I'm so f sorry. I'm so glad that you're here. I, I know how challenging it may be to even like identify, let alone admit to yourself what you've been through and that's okay. Take as much time as you need to process if you're ready to process and please reach out to someone to talk about it. And always remember it is their shame, not yours. And I'll leave it at that. Oh honey, we need a kitten palette cleanser for real. Make sure to follow me on Instagram so I'm not lonely and comment on this photo with the graduation cap emoji so I know you came from this video. Couple of Twitter shout outs from my Gabby Hanna doc. First one goes to Paige Roberts who said, thank you Swoop for continuing to shed light on extremely important topics that major companies and platforms are continuing to ignore. And to Crystalia who said, adoring these docs she's doing and exploring people for who they really are in such an adult way. Watched for years and will continue to do so. First of all, thanks for being a part of the family, but also you guys, like, I can't even like express. Y'all have encouraged me so much and you guys have just made me feel empowered at times when I've been like really down on myself and I'm really excited about this beautiful community that we've all created here together. Are you just pretending that I'm not here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Petty University merch is coming. I am so excited. We are about to be magna cum laude in Petty. If any of you haven't seen my Gabby Hanna two-part series, I'll link it down below. And if you want to be in my next shout out, just follow me on Twitter at SpankyV and retweet this video right here. Huge thanks again to Deck of Scarlet for sponsoring this doc. Make sure to check out the link in the description and use code SWOOP for 20% off your first order. You'll love it. 
think at the end of the day, it's important that we don't lose sight of the fact that kids need to be kids. Teens need to be teens and adults need to let them do that. There will unfortunately be manipulative hunters of the world, but that doesn't mean we have to continue to give them a voice or a platform to abuse people on. Remembering that trash opinions are exactly that. They're trash. Be mindful of what you consume, protect your peace, and let the trolls dig their own graves. Y'all got this. Class dismissed. Swoop!